where to stay. All part of the plan, yes. What are you doing here? What is my plus one? We had a sick night, bitches. Whoa. <laughs> Fuck some local tries and gets cancer. Cry me a fucking river. Years from now, they're gonna ask, where were you when they took over the planet? Mankind will know that mutants exist. They'll fear us. And that fear will turn to hatred. Not if we stop a war. Not if we risk our lives doing so. We have it in us to be the better man. We already have are. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States. They're just kids. No, they were kids. You ready for this? Let's find out. The cost of freedom is always high. No one can foresee precisely what course it will take. One path we shall never choose. And that is the path of surrender. Listen to me very carefully, my friend. Killing will not bring you peace. Peace was never an option. Welcome back to 2011 Movie Madness, the week-long event of movie reviews counting down to the review of Transformers 3 Dark of the Moon. So let's keep things moving with the next movie in line, X-Men First Class, starring James McAvoy, Kevin Bacon, and Michael Fassbender. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not the biggest fan of the X-Men movies. The comics? Sure, but the movies? Nah. X-Men was one of the most boring films I have ever seen. From the lackluster fight scenes and fucking up characters left and right, it just wasn't my thing. X-Men United, on the other hand, was a great film and addressed all the issues from the first film. The Last Stand tends to make people cry, though. Oh god. It happened. It actually happened. He fucking did it this time! So I won't touch upon that film. And X-Men Origins was just plain stupid. Fun? Yeah, sure. But it was such a dumb movie. So to say the least, a reboot in a sense was needed. One whose production value and care was great and this film nails both aspects extremely well. X-Men First Class tells the origin story of Charles Xavier and Eric Lyncher and how they came to be known as Professor X and Magneto. The center of the story revolves around the duo coming together in effort to stop the leader of the Hellfire Club, Sebastian Shaw, as played by Kevin Bacon. Magneto wants Shaw for his own personal revenge while Professor Xavier wishes to stop Shaw in an effort to bring mutant and human relation closer in a peaceful manner. In all of this, we get the introduction and origin stories of various X-Men characters and situations. While it is fun to see these characters come to full circle from the beginning, there are a couple of issues with their origin stories slightly being messed up with, which is really the film's only big weakness. Many of the characters presented aren't actually a part of the first class at all. Personally, I did not mind this, since the rest of the film was so great, but I can't see how fans and readers of the comic book would take issue with the film for this. It is messing with the source material after all. Such goof-ups on the film's part are the ages of Charles Xavier and Eric, as they are supposed to be younger according to the original three films. Alex Summers is not Scott Summers' father, but instead his brother, and Mystique was never a protagonist or a friend of Charles Xavier. While it does suck that these alterations were made, they aren't toyed with any further, so you can let it go, or at least I did. Performance wise, the film greatly excels at. James McAvoy is excellent in the film, playing a charming and intelligent Charles Xavier. It was also a nice touch seeing him as this sort of ladies man during his youth. This showcases his growth as a person since the young Professor Xavier is drastically different from the older one. He goes from being this smooth talker with the ladies and interested in relationships to a man greatly dedicated by his cause students, and the well-being of man and mutant kind. He is also self-sacrificing by showing no care for romantic relationships as an older man, 
This only shows how strong his convictions are as a character. Truly this was a brilliant move on the part of the filmmakers. Another strong note is of course Michael Fassbender who completely stole the show in this movie. His performance was excellent throughout and he honestly deserves an Oscar nomination for his role. He of course won't get it but he does deserve it. Fassbender captures all the range and emotions of a tormented soul in Magneto. He shows us all his rage and his sadness in his moments of weakness. His facial expressions are always on key and brilliantly emotes everything feeling at any moment during the film. From his struggles with revenge and redemption to moments of peace and tranquility, it was simply stunning watching him in the movie and interacting with James McAvoy. Simply put, these two men had insanely good chemistry and worked perfectly well with and against each other. The rest of the cast members also give solid to great performances. Kevin Bacon is strong as he mostly is playing Sebastian Shaw. He comes off as a slimy yet charismatic villain in a cocky sense. These all seem to be the roles he's been playing as of late too. Everyone else turns in solid roles from the first class to other mutants and humans. Hank McCoy is fully realized as Beast in the film and January Jones looks like Emma Frost jumped out of the comic book pages. Other mutants don't have as much screen time but do their parts well. Could they have been better developed? Yes. But for what was presented? It was very well solid. Visually, the film looks great. The CGI is up to par with today's standards, minus moments with Mystique which seem to stand out a bit from the other visual effects. Guess that's just what happens with blue transforming chicks, maybe? Anyway, pacing is also excellent as the film never slows down thanks to the performances of Fassbender and McAvoy. Action scenes are also done very well using frenetic cinematography and the drama especially towards the end of the film is excellent and well paced. Humor is also used in a witty manner and the cameos and film homages were a nice treat as well. I also love the stylish look of the 60s in the film. It gave it a very sleek feel and almost felt James Bond-esque in terms of satire. Speaking of the attire, I completely love the yellow and blue suits. Yeah, that's right, I love them. Fuck those black leather jumpsuits. These suits showcase the X-Men, how they are supposed to be, and for that I love it. Overall, the film is a great time at the movies, and to miss it would be to deny yourself a great time as well. X-Men First Class gets a 9.5 out of 10. Do not